Everybody. So in our introduction to the teaching on the lampstand, which refers to Revelation 1 verse 12, we, uh, we read there that John turned to see who is the voice that was speaking to him. Please watch our first video if you've missed it. It's a little bit down from our last few. And uh, or you can go into our categories on the left on your PC. There's uh, three little stripes or dots. Go in there and you'll see different categories of teachings that we do. And then you can go into the book of Revelation and then you will get the first one there. So when John turned uh, to see the great voice that was like a calling of a war trumpet, I would imagine that John was very curious to see who or what caught his attention. Uh, through this great voice to see what it was that was calling him or what was the acting energy or the source from where this great voice came from. And uh, you know when you read this, I think if you don't get goosebumps when you read that you don't understand uh, how great God is because can you imagine that he appears before you right now and starts speaking to you in a voice like a war trumpet or like a great noise like a, a, a flood of a river with great water uh, um, noise that comes towards you I mean imagine that okay but Weddon's commentary on the Bible states the following he says the voice being all he as yet knows, he turns to see into what embodiment it will shape itself. Well, I like that explanation very much. And some people might ask why John sees the candlesticks before he sees the face like the sun shining in full power at midday. Well, personally, I believe that the candlesticks representing the seven churches were second with regards to the importance of this vision, even though John saw them first. And the reason for this being that the face of God grew gradually into view as he was looking at this vision. I think the clearness of his countenance was so bright that John could not look at Jesus directly. Can you imagine looking upon the God that's standing in front of you? Well, first there was the trumpet voice, then the candlestick churches, and then finally the bodily God, invisible person. Can you imagine that? You know, many people think it was Jesus or the Father, God himself, speaking to John. But of course, from verse 10, we notice that John was in the spirit raptured in the power of God. That was the Holy Spirit's power on the Lord's day when he heard this great voice that said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. And this refers to the fullness of the bodily Godhead, that is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It was the true in God, the bodily Godhead, three in one, that instructed John to write what he sees. And then in the midst of the lampstands through manifestation was Jesus Christ, according to verse 13, which we haven't done yet. But there was the Son of Man. And uh, I think it's very interesting to note all these things. Well, let me talk to you a little bit about the place of the setting of the lampstand. The position of the lampstand was in the holy place of the tabernacle, Leviticus 24, 5 and 6. And also you can go and read the whole of Exodus 25 and 26 with regards to the lampstand and all the other things that were in the tabernacle in the desert at that time. You can also go to Hebrews 9 verse 2. Um, you know where they, they talk about the table with the showbread and all the other stuff. This portion is called the holy place, you know. And uh, if you read Exodus 26 verse 35, you see that the, the table for the showbread was outside the veil in the holy place on the north side and the lampstand opposite the table on the south of the tabernacle. But I have shared this with you in a teaching one Sunday night in the church, so I don't want to go back to that again. We spoke about the lampstand, we spoke about the oil and why it was so important. And we talked briefly on who was responsible for the lampstand and how to put it away when they were traveling in the desert. Now, we, we also spoke about uh, 
different references with regards to the lampstand and then our lampstand that must be full of light. And uh, there's scriptures in the Bible that you can go through, like Matthew 5, 15, that says, Men do not light a lamp and put it under a peck measure, but on a lampstand, and it gives light into all the house. Go and read also Mark 4, verse 21, Luke 8, verse 16, and Luke 11, verse 33. But then come back to Revelations 2, verse 5 where God speaks to one of the churches and he said, remember from when heights you are fallen. And he says, uh, he talks about the, the works that they previously had done. And then God says this amazing thing. He says, or else I will visit you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you change your mind and repent. All right, so today in the teaching, I want to talk to you a little bit about the gold, the gold and the golden lampstand so first and foremost gold was created by god and he gave the wise king solomon wisdom to make shields of pure gold if you go into the old testament and read second chronicles 12 verse 9 it says shishka king of egypt came up against jerusalem and he took away the treasures of the house of the lord and of the king's house and he took away also the shields of the gold Solomon had made. So God gave Solomon the wisdom to make it. Now remember during Bible times, gold was such a sacred metal that the furniture of Israel's two inner sanctuaries was all of gold. And it was not permitted to use gold in any other services except for royal and divine. And as far back as the time of King David, gold was not used as value standards, but as a very precious item of trade or marketing being weighed. And the first time we read about the golden lampstand was, of course, in Exodus 25, verse 31 and 32, up until 38. You can go and read the whole piece there. The prophet Zechariah also had a vision of the golden lampstand in Zechariah 4 verse 1. He said, the angel who talked with me, this was the prophet Zechariah, he said, the angel came again and wake, woke me up like a man who is wakened up out of his sleep and said to me, what do you see? And Zechariah answered and said, I see, behold, a lampstand all of gold with its bowels for oil and on the top of it and its seven lambs on it and there are seven pipes to each of the seven lambs which are upon the top of it so gold in the spiritual dimension symbolizes righteousness and wisdom now metaphorically of christian character if if you go and read revelation 3 verse 18 it talks about heavenly things divine nature kingly nature of course to live in the kingdom of god god's deity and his beauty and how precious the bodily godhead is gold also speaks about undefilement and holiness it talks about the stability and the duration of your kingdom life which is of course perfection and purity gold also represents god's glory and his strength and his excellence and also gold speak about incorruptibility and brightness and gold cannot be harmed by time or fire well eliphaz that is job's friend said god must be our gold in job 22 verse 25 the scripture says make the almighty your gold and the lord your precious silver treasure Job 22, 26 says, Then you will have delight in the Almighty and you will lift up your face to God. Well, I assume you also want this divine treasure to have God as your gold and God represents righteousness. So you want God to be your righteousness living inside of you. That is kingdom life. John Trapp says the age of gold was not long and then followed silver and brass and iron well brass talks in the spirit about a fake religion and iron well obviously less than that 
So it is interesting to note that God even told Ephesus and Pergamos, who was imperfect and backslidden churches like Sardis and Laodicea, that they were represented by gold. Isn't that interesting? So even till today, some refer gold as much more valuable than other metals. Gold appears so many times in the book of Revelation, indicating the valuableness, the beauty and the excellence of all that is connected to the church of Christ and golden churches, of course. And uh, remember that God said that, you know, gold is, is, is precious. And he said, uh, like uh, the prophet Zechariah said, uh, gold was so precious and he saw that he saw the pipes of the seven golden lampstands and as I said in Revelation 3 18 you've got all those those characteristics of what gold represents in the spiritual realm the valuableness the beauty the excellence everything that's connected to the church of Christ the golden churches uh, represent righteous men witnessing unto Jesus Christ. So we should be like gold. We should be pure as beaten gold in a doctrine. We should be disciplined to stay away from dishonesty and bribery and fraud and all other kinds of negative things. We should keep the distance from scandals and corrupt communication according to Ephesians 4 verse 29. And we should live in splendor and glory of God, our Father, like the scripture said, make God your gold, make God your righteousness. Well, Revelations 21, 21 talks about the street of gold. I have a whole teaching about the street of gold that I want to give you the next time we speak about the lampstand. And I specifically want to bring that teaching of the street of gold in here while we are talking about gold and lampstands because it's very interesting and also you should understand the revelation if you want to understand the rest of the book of Revelation. So please note the city of gold or pure gold and the one street and remember the Bible does not talk about streets plural it talks about one street of gold it is spiritual and not physical so you are not going to walk on a pure golden street neither will you live in a golden city this book is not about the city of El Dorado <laughs> well I love that little movie about El Dorado I really think it was really funny and I I just loved watching that movie uh, about the city of gold and uh, the two men that went there Giulio, Giulio and his friend well, but this is not a movie. We are talking today about what is real in the kingdom of God. So it's one street of pure gold. It's not streets. And uh, so there's a very big revelation with regard to the street of gold in this book of Revelation in chapter 21. So next week, we're going to talk about this golden street in this book. And until then, I'm going to say goodbye to you and may you have a wonderful, blessed weekend and may God bless you. Shalom.